Hey, nonprofiteers, and welcome to another episode of Nonprofit Biz Talk with me, Tracy B. Allen, your nonprofit strategist. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should start a nonprofit organization. It's a question I get a lot, especially from people who have a for profit um, businesses or people who want to start a nonprofit. They're not exactly sure what the criteria are for starting a nonprofit organization and whether or not it's a good fit for them. So we're gonna explore that today, whether or not you should be the founder or the executive director slash executive director of a nonprofit organization. So what are the, some of the um, prere prerequisites to starting a nonprofit organization? So, when you're thinking about starting a nonprofit organization, first of all, you need to make sure that there is a true need for the service or the program that you want to provide to the community. So having a neighbor or a couple of neighbors or a couple of people in the community that have a particular problem may not be a need to start a nonprofit organization. It has to be an overwhelming need within the community that is crippling the community because that need is not being met. So for instance, if you live in a community where more than half of the adults in your community do not have a formal education, like most of them dropped out of high school, so they don't have a high school diploma. And now they're having kids that are going to school and their kids are not meeting the standards required to do well in school. So like they're not reading up to par, their math skills are below level. There may be a need to start a nonprofit organization that can supplement where the school is failing. So you may wanna start a nonprofit organization that deals with helping adults with second chance get a GED and maybe some trade. You may wanna start an after school program that serves the, those disenfranchised children within the community and help them to get to a, an educational level that will foster um, success. But before you even think about that, one of the things that you need to do is you need to do some market research. You need to find out if there is another organization within your community that is um, supplying the particular need to the community already. So is there another nonprofit organization in your community that is dealing with helping adults to get their GED? Is there another nonprofit organization within your community that is serving these students to help them fill that educational gap? Is that nonprofit organization successful at doing that? Can they use help? Is there a need for another nonprofit organization to help fill that over, overflowing gap that the current nonprofit organization cannot fill. How close is that nonprofit organization within a radius to your community and how close would your intended organization be to that? Because what you don't want to do is to start a nonprofit organization when there's already one in your community serving that particular um, mission and then you come in and you end up diluting the funding pool for that particular mission. I mean, there's only about so much money to go around and unless the particular um, need is so overwhelming that you need several nonprofit organizations to um, effectively um, solve the problem, you may not be you may what starting a nonprofit organization for that need may be counterproductive instead of helpful, if that makes sense. So these are some of the things that you want to consider when deciding whether or not you want to start a nonprofit. That market research piece is pivotal. Do not just say, oh, well, I know at least five people that have this problem, so I want to address it. You know, passion without um, passion, without purpose and purpose, without the ability to implement does not bear fruit. So you want to make sure you do your due diligence and do your market research first. Find out just how many people in the community have that problem, how many of them are being served, how, much, how many of them are being underserved, and whether or not there are organizations already serving that population or not. So how would yours fit in to this already existing um, 
entity within the community. So one of the things that you can do, if there is already an existing um, organization, there's not an overflow that needs to be um, served, is that you can, and you feel the need to um, connect with that particular mission, is you can go ahead and volunteer with the existing organization. That way you can satisfy your passion to help the community. You can also pitch programs to that existing organization and work out a payment plan or something with them so that you can be compensated for um, for running that program through their organization. Therefore, you're serving the community and you're making some money. That's if they have some discretionary funds and if your program fits into their mission. Um, if it's a program that they truly want, they may know of some open grants that they can write for so that you can um run the program through them it may take some time just know that everything takes time so don't be impatient um they may be able to get some sponsors to sponsor the program so there are different ways in which you can impact the community without starting a nonprofit organization starting a nonprofit organization is not the only way to impact the community you don't have to start your own and one of the reasons you may say, oh, wow, it's so strange that you would say that as a nonprofit consultant yourself. Why would you discourage people from starting a nonprofit organization? Because I don't want to see people fail. That is not the reason that I'm in business for. I want to see people succeed. And in order to succeed, you need to give yourself a running start. And if, like I said, if there are other organizations in your community that are already serving that particular population and they're doing it effectively and you come in, then there's not going to be enough support for your organization because everybody's already putting them, their monies behind this established organization. And all you'll be doing is trying to dilute the funds that are already there. And therefore, you're not making a positive impact on the community, you're actually going to be making a negative impact on the community. So I'm not trying to discourage you from starting a nonprofit organization. I'm trying to preserve upcoming organizations and already existing organizations. We should only start an organization if there is a true need in your community for the services that you're going to render. So um, just be very cognizant of that. Make sure you take the time to do your market research so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into and whether or not, like I said, the idea, the mission that you want to um, fulfill is a viable mission. Okay. Another thing that you want to take into consideration is that when you start a nonprofit organization, grants just don't come rolling on in <laughs> like, you know, like a robo. It just doesn't come on in. So, um, a lot of people think that when they start a nonprofit organization, bam, they're going to get some grants. It doesn't happen that way. Sorry. It really doesn't happen that way. It can take a year to five years before you can get your first grant because you have to prove yourself. You have to prove that the programs and services that you offer to the community actually work, that you have data, that there's a true need for the programs and services that you offer, that people are receiving results, and that the results are long lasting. A lot of grantors are, you know, want to see the data. They want to know that when they put their monies behind you, that you are going to deliver upon what you say you're going to deliver, that you have the resources to do it. So you want to take your time and make sure that you plan out your programs effectively. If you're thinking about programs, that's why I always tell people to beta test. Beta test your programs. If you're thinking about starting a nonprofit organization, have a free cohort where people can come in, utilize the um, program, and you can tweak it and see what needs to be changed. And then follow those people and see if whatever it is, Say that you, okay, let's say you um, ran a GED program. I always go back to education because I was an educator for over 15 years. So let's just say you ran a GED program and that was your nonprofit. That's the nonprofit you wanted to start, an educational service. Um, you would tr do a mock or beta test um, a GED program. Maybe you have a specialized way of teaching it and you think it's going to garner results and people are going to be able to pass that GED test much easier, much quicker than they would if they went through a tradi traditional GED program. 
So you get a cohort of maybe say 20 people together, you get them in there, you go through the GED program, you see how many people pass on the first time, how many people had to take it the second time, how many people just didn't pass at all. And then you document why they were not successful at passing the GED. Were their skill levels too low to pass or was your program just not effective? Do you need to tweak some things within your program to make it more effective? So you want to beta test. Beta testing is key. So you have data to work with. So you know that's another way of validating whether or not, you know, your mission is viable. Okay. So beta testing. Um, another thing that you want to know is that starting a nonprofit organization costs money. It is not cheap to start a nonprofit organization. And people are not going to be throwing money your way. You have got to sit down. Take a step back from the passion. Take a step back from the urgency and plan out where is the money going to come from in order to start this organization? Where are you going to get the money? So if I wanted to start a clothing store, I know that I have to have um, personal capital to start this clothing store. This clothing store. That's one of the things I need. I need to have some startup monies. And then I may be able to take a loan out from the bank to get the rest started. But I need to figure out where I'm getting capital. I see far too often where people decide to start nonprofit organizations and they do not stop and think about where's the money going to come from? Where? Like, it's not going to fall out of the sky. You have to plan. Where is it going to come from? If You know, people like to say, oh, well, if I put my money into it, I need to be able to secure my position in the organization. Because as we know, nonprofit organizations are publicly owned entities. And whether or not you started it, you become the founder, granted, and you'll forever be the founder. That never changes. But you don't have to be in existence in the organization. The board can decide to get rid of you if they deem that you are not upholding the mission excuse me, the mission, vision, and values of the organizations. So people are always very apprehensive about that. But that's the risk that you take when you decide to start a nonprofit organization. And I don't think anyone who has the passion and the desire to start a nonprofit organization is going to go into it and lose the passion and desire and not a whole, uphold the mission, vision, and values of the organization. So for the most case, most people don't have to think about that. That should not be an issue that you need to consider when starting a nonprofit organization, because if you had the passion to start, then you should have the passion to continue and forever uphold the mission, visions, and value and want to see the impact within the community and do what's right to make sure that you make that impact. So I don't think that that is something that most people should or need to um, think about, but it's a question that I get all the time, whether or not I can write myself into the bylaws and say that the board can never get rid of me. Like, nope, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It just doesn't happen. It's not something that can be done. That's really highly illegal. And it's just very sketchy. Like, who does that? Like, why would you need that type of security? That already says to me that maybe starting a nonprofit organization is not the right thing for you if your mind is already going there. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? It, it just really does not make sense. So, like I said, making sure that your um, ideas are viable by taking the time to do your market research, making the time to plan out your budget, make sure that you have the money to start up because you need to educate yourself. So that should be part of your budget. I don't know a lot about nonprofits, but I need to find out a lot. If I'm going to start this nonprofit and I'm going to run this nonprofit because it's not going to run itself, you know, then you need to look for board members. Um, who, who's going to be on your board? You know, it can't be your cousins, it can't be your mama, it can't be your sister, your daddy, your best friend. It needs to be people who are going to bring value to your organization. So you have to network and find the right people to fit the organizational structure. So if you're doing an educational um, nonprofit, then you want a principal, you may want a teacher, you may want a pediatrician, you may want some doctors, some lawyers, some, you know, some um, a CPA. You want people who are influential in the community and you want people who are financially stable, but you also want them to be diverse in age 
in a race in ethnicity and financial status as well so you just don't want all rich people sitting on your board you don't want all poor people sitting on your board you don't want all middle class people you want a full range of men women you know black white um chinese indian whatever it is you want to be have a diverse board and it should reflect the um, community that you serve so if you're in a highly um Pop a population of black people, you may want to have a little bit more black people on your board. If you're in a highly populated Hispanic um, community, you may want a little bit more Hispanic people on your board, but you still have to have. So if you have five people, maybe you have two black people, you have a white person, you have a Chinese person, and you have an Indian person or a Hispanic person. Do you understand what I'm saying? You just want to make sure that your board is diverse. You do not want to have all women on a board or all men on a board or, you know, all um, black people on the board or all Hispanics. You don't want to have a board that is not representative of the culture we live in. I don't know any community that's just purely black, so purely white people or, well, not in my neighborhood. I, I personally don't know of any communities like that. My community is very diverse. So the people who live next to me, they're... Um, they're black. The people who live across the street from me, they're Hispanic. The people who live next to the person who lives next to me, they're white. So my community is very diverse. And if I was starting a nonprofit organization in this community, my board should look like the community I live in or the community that I'm serving. So that is something that you also need to think about, the diversity of your board and making sure that your board understands what their roles and responsibilities are, what their fiduciary duties are to the board and to the community. You want to make sure that you are upfront with the finances of your board because this can cause serious discourse within the organization if you are hiding things from your board up front. This is the only time that you get a chance to truly choose who you want on your board and you want to make sure that you utilize this time effectively. If you don't, you are going to end up, like I said, having a broken board. And when a broken you have a broken board, nothing gets done. The board is the, the governing body of the organization, which means they make the decisions. So choose wisely because this is the only time you get to choose. And I mean, seriously, after that, the board makes the decisions of who comes and goes and, and you know, that type of stuff on the board. So educate yourself. Choose the right board members. Do your market research. Okay, and then plan. Before you even fill out any paperwork, you need to start planning, like I said. Oh yes, and um, decide where you're gonna get the finances from for a startup. So back to the board. The board is one of the places where you start getting some finances. The board, if they believe in your mission, vision, and value, and they support your organization, and they wanna see it grow to a capacity that can seriously impact the community, then they would want to invest as a donor into the organization. I call it dues, but they're actually making a donation to the organization. When they sign all their contracts, that should be in there. How much um, is their yearly dues to the organization? It's going to be $500, $1,000, $2,000, $5,000. You have to decide that based on the people who you have on your board, and that should be something that you discuss with them, and then you set your terms and they need to abide by that. So that's some, if you have five people on your board and it is $500, that's $2,500 that you have to help with the startup costs of starting a nonprofit organization. And then you need to plan. You need to sit down with your board and you need to create the business plan or with a consultant if nobody knows how to do um, a really effective business plan and plan. It's a roadmap to success. How are you going to get from point A to point B? And point A is startup. Point B is impacting the community. How are you going to get there? It's the overarching um, plan to the other plans that you're going to put in place. So after you've done your um, business plan, the next thing that you're going to do is your strategic plan. And you should sit with the board and a consultant for this as well and figure out step by step over the next three years what needs to be done when it needs to be done and how long it's going to take to achieve that particular goal what are your goals and objectives 
for impacting the community and upholding the mission and working towards the vision over the next three years. Then you go on to your development plan. Okay, and your development plan is how are you going to inject revenue into the organization? Remember, it just can't be grants because grants don't come for a year to three to five years. So um, how much are we going to charge for programs and services on that sliding scale? Um, how are we going to acquire and retain donors? What type of fundraisers are we going to have? When are we going to apply for grants? Are there some smaller grants that we um, qualify for right now? All of these things are things that you need to think about when you're putting your nonprofit together. So based on what I've said, does it sound overwhelming to you? If it sounds overwhelming to you right now, maybe it's not a good time for you to start a nonprofit organization because it takes time, it takes patience, it takes money, and it takes education. Do you have all those things to put towards starting a nonprofit organization. It is not a side hustle. You can't do this every now and again because it's not going to be su successful. No one is going to take it seriously. When you go to start a nonprofit organization, the startup process, I tell people, truly takes about a year to truly start a successful nonprofit organization because it's a long, leisurely walk on the beach. It's not a marathon. We're not running to the finish line. We just not, okay? We need to take our time and get from point A to point B. And you should not be rushing through the startup process of a nonprofit organization. If that's what you're doing, then you need to stop, hold up a minute, and reevaluate whether or not this is for you. Because you're not, like I said, going to start up and bam, you're gonna get grants coming at you left and right. It does not work like that. So take some time, pull back, reassess as to whether or not this is truly what you need to be doing, okay? Um, so do you have the time? Do you have the money? Do you have the patience? Do you have the education to start a nonprofit? Are you able to network? Are you able to sell your mission, vision, and values to potential donors so that you can get donors to help with furthering your mission, the support from the people within the community? Are you able to make partners with other businesses, for-profit businesses and other nonprofit um, organizations to supplement services? If it sounds overwhelming to you, if you do not have the time to dedicate to it at this point in time, then I said, pull back, take your time, and before you even start looking for a building or office space, go through all those steps, including writing out detailed programs because you need to have step-by-step -step processes of how you're going to run your programs and services and the key people in place and the strategic plan will help you you know decide who's going to do what but these are all things that you need to take into consideration when you're thinking about run, um, starting a nonprofit organization okay it's not just I have this overwhelming passion to serve my community and bam, I'm going to go fill out the 1023 easy and I'm going to get a determination letter from a nonprofit from the IRS and I own a nonprofit, which is something you should never say because you don't own the nonprofit organization. It is a publicly owned entity, even though you started it and you put up your money and your hard work and your tears and your sweat and all of that good stuff, it does not belong to you. It's a publicly owned entity. It does not matter if your name is on that paper and you do not own it and you should never, ever, 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 ever say that you own a nonprofit organization that is inaccurate on many levels. You do not own it. You are the founder of the organization and you will forever be the founder, but you don't have to be in charge in any way um, for, with the nonprofit. As a matter of fact, I know people who start nonprofits because they have the connections and they are able to bring people together. They're connectors. So they're able to bring people together and they see a need. They do all the back work that I talked about and they'll start up a nonprofit and get the board together and somebody just continues but they're the founder but they have no affiliation with the nonprofit they'll come to fundraising events and whatever but that's it they know they don't own it they just want to help the community that truly help the community so they will start these organizations 
um, like I said, because they're good connectors. They can get funders in. They can get boards together. They can get people moving and shaking, and that's what they're about. They don't have the need for control because if you have the need for true control, a nonprofit organization is not what you want to do. You want to start an LLC or sole proprietorship. A nonprofit organization is not about control because when you have a nonprofit organization, when you start one, you're actually acquiescing to the board. The board of directors is the governing body and they make the decisions. So even though you are the founder, you don't get to run the, the um, board. You don't get to make all the decisions. The decisions are made through the board. And no, 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 you cannot sit on the board. That is a pure conflict of interest. So again, these are just some of the things that you want to think about. Should I start a nonprofit organization? Should I? Well, go back through this and listen to the things I talked about. And if anything just seems extremely overwhelming to you at this point in time, it may not be the right time for you to start a nonprofit. You probably would be better off serving as a volunteer for an existing nonprofit. You're still impacting the um, community. You're still serving through your passion. You're still going to make a change in someone's life, but just not through your own organization at this time. Doesn't mean that you can ne you don't have to ever start one. This just may not be the right time for you. I like to tell people, if you need the services that your organization or another organization um, provides, then you should not be starting a nonprofit organization. You need to make sure that you are financially okay, financially, emotionally, okay before you decide to start a nonprofit organization because again it takes a lot of time it takes money it takes patience and it takes a lot of knowledge to start a nonprofit organization if you want it to be successful and success means profitability because yes you have to make a profit you must make money because it is a business and every business needs money in order to stay afloat yeah, I went over some of the things that you need, revenue streams that you need to have come into your nonprofit. So yes, it must make money, so it must be profitable. The profitability of the nonprofit organization must be sustainable. So that means that it's profitable to the point that it can keep making profit to keep the organization going over a period of time. So that's what um, sustainability is. Is the programs and services and the revenue streams that you currently have are they sustainable? Are they going to be able to carry over a period of time? So sustainability, and are you compliant? Are you compliant with the, the local and federal rules and regulations that govern um, the running, the day-to-day -day operations of a nonprofit organization? Are you participating in a lot of, um, are you going to be participating in a lot of conflict of interest activities, a lot of UBIT activities? There's so many things to think about because um, I think one of the first things I got I, that I started off saying was that I help nonprofit leaders stay out of jail because there's so many things that if you don't do right, that can get you in trouble with the IRS. Because remember, the IRS is the governing body of a nonprofit organization. So those are just some of the things that you want to think about when you decide if you want to start a nonprofit organization. It is not a venture for the faint at heart. Okay, It is not an adventure for the faint at heart. It is something that you should take seriously because this, you're dealing with people lives and you don't want to start something get people hyped up and then you let them down they've dealt with enough loss and disappointment in their lives and when you start this organization you just want to make sure that you are starting it for the right reasons that you can sustain providing the services and the programs to the community that you decided you want to serve so those are just some of the things that you want to think about when starting a nonprofit organization or some of the things that the action steps that you want to go through before you even pay money to organize on the um, state level and formulate and organize on the, the federal level before you fill out your nonprofit business entity on a state level or your 1023 um, or 1023 easy with the IRS, you want to go through those steps. Do your market research, find your board members, write your business plan, come up with a strategic plan, do your development plan, 
make sure that your idea is viable. Write out those programs and services because that's where the money is. That's where the data comes from. Are they going to be, is it something that is going to truly impact and make lasting change within your community? So those are just a few of the things that you want to go, the processes that you want to go through, some of the ideologies that you want to think about before you decide to start a nonprofit organization. Remember, it takes money, it takes time, it takes patience, it takes knowledge. And you need to be, have the right people in play to make sure that it's successful. So that's it. Should I start a nonprofit organization? Like I said, those are the tips, those are the action steps and strategies that you need to go through to make that informed decision. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not your consultant. <laughs> um, I'm just giving you general information that you can utilize to make informed decisions. I'm not giving you legal advice and I'm not giving you consultant advice because you didn't hire me to be your consultant. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Nonprofit Biz Talk. Until next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>